Interesting situation because, uh, well, on the teacher side, there's a bit of debate within Labor as well. But let's go to the Treasurer now, Josh Frydenberg. He's out and talking about housing and Labor's negative gearing policy. Let's listen in. Today, have tied themselves in knots trying to explain their policy. The reality is it won't be long before Bill Shorten and Chris Bowen drop this policy because it's the worst possible time to impose it on a housing market which is un undergoing an orderly transition. Any questions? That transition is going on under your watch. You've had a 20 to 25 per cent fall in investor activity over the past 12 months. Do you take any responsibility to say people in Sydney who have seen the value of their home fall by 75000 over the last uh, eight, nine months? Well, the first point to make is that it's the RBA who has said that what is occurring in the housing market to date is healthy. The second point to make is the pullback in investor demand has been a result of APRA's changes. And we have encouraged and supported those changes in the growth in investor demand in the housing market. However, if you change, as Labor is proposing, dramatically the negative gearing uh, tax rules and the capital gains tax rules, you will see a big drop in the housing market and just yesterday we saw from the Master Builders Association what the impact will be. 32,000 less jobs, 42,000 fewer dwellings uh, and big impacts across the Australian economy. Um, the Labor Party should drop this terrible policy. It was designed at a time of a very different housing market. What we have seen is an orderly transition to uh, more stability in the housing market, that's to be welcomed. But changes to negative gearing and capital gains, as proposed by the Labor Party, will certainly be very punishing. Treasurer, um, just on energy companies, you know, the government's talking about wielding a big stick next year if they don't uh, bring down prices from January 1. Are you prepared to call the Royal Commission into the energy industry if they don't bring down prices? Look, the Prime Minister's commented on that before and he said that's obviously one option that's open to the government. But what we are focusing on now is implementing the ACCC's recommendations. Those recommendations will see a standard offer put in place to reduce the complexity and the confusion uh, for energy customers, uh, supporting new generation into the energy market uh, to deal with a market failure where uh, companies that want to build new firm generation uh, can't get the long-term finance um, that they need and pursuing with the states the reliability guarantee which will ensure the lights stay on through some of the challenging times that occur over Australian summers. Um, Maurice Payne said today that the, she found out about the potential change of Middle East policy on the Sunday before the Monday when uh, I think uh, quite a few others were briefed. When did you find out? I spoke to the Prime Minister over that weekend as well. When um, Which well, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to give you my diary uh, and, my, and my logbook. Um, the, the reality is, Andrew, um, that as the Deputy Leader, I speak to the Prime Minister um, multiple times a day on a whole range of issues that affect the government, uh, and that is one. And I do want to point out that I strongly support um, the Prime Minister's announcement uh, about um, the, uh, the potential relocation of the embassy about the Iran deal and about the stronger defence ties. Right. Notwithstanding not not your support, just with your not deputy your hat on, just with your deputy hat on, will there be a special party room meeting today to deal with uh, changes to the Sex Discrimination Act? And if not, why not? Because the Prime Minister said that this was a, an urgent issue that he wanted to deal with this sitting fortnight. Look, I'll, I'll leave that. Uh, to, to, the, to the whips, the Prime Minister and the Leader of Government Business. Well, Labor, ha the Labor has issue, Labor. Sure. on the Embassy sure. issue. The, pre the PM said he was open to discussions to moving the Embassy. Have those discussions been had? Has any progress been made to this, uh, to this decision? Well, he's begun a process and obviously... Uh, uh, what does that mean? Well, there are internal discussions going on with uh, the, the Foreign Minister, the Defence Minister. Um, and other members of the cabinet. We've discussed it at, at cabinet level, uh, but, the, but, 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 but the, the key. The, well, the prime minister has had spoken uh, uh, to uh, to the Israeli After prime the minister. Well, uh, you, uh, you can talk to him about 
uh, when and where, uh, and how many times he's spoken to, to foreign leaders. That's not for me to comment on. But the point is, um, our policy has not changed about a two-state solution. That's, that's really important to understand. Second, no decisions have been taken about moving the embassy. The third point to, to make is that uh, the fact that Australia's embassy uh, is not in Jerusalem is an anomaly for the more than 80 uh, high commissions and embassies that we have around the world, which are in those nations' capitals. And West Jerusalem would be the capital of Israel under any two-state solution. I think that's important to understand. Treasurer, Labor this morning announced that it would in fact take your national energy guarantee to the next election. You must be pretty happy mm -hmm. hearing that. Well, I think, you know, Bill Shorten uh, has again shown what a flip-flopper he is. I mean, only a few weeks ago, uh, Bill Shorten was saying that the National Energy Guarantee was a Frankenstein of a policy. Now he wants to embrace it. The reality is he doesn't have the courage of his convictions. The reality is uh, he will do whatever he feels uh, is in his political interest at any particular time. I mean, when it comes to tax, for example, uh, he's taken multiple uh, positions on the issue of uh, tax cuts for small and medium-sized enterprises. He's taken different positions on the retirees' tax. I think it's only a matter of time before he backflips on his uh, new property tax because what we've seen uh, from the Housing Industry Association, what we've seen from the Master Builders Association, what we've seen from RiskWise, what we've seen from City, what we've seen from a whole host of commentators uh, is a warning about the dangers of Labor's new property tax. And today, Fitch, one of the three leading credit rating agencies in the world, warns that a major drop in investor demand in the property market could contribute to a big property price drop. And that is exactly what Labor's changes to negative gearing and capital gains are designed to achieve. How Treasurer, much Treasurer, would it cost notwithstanding your support for... How much would it cost taxpayers to indemnify a new coal power plant against future carbon price? And will you rule that out? I don't agree with the premise of your question. Notwithstanding your obvious support for this, this new policy, new Middle Eastern um, policy, uh, can, you, can you comment on whether it is appropriate that such a, a, a policy change, potential policy change, uh, be launched into without any advice from DFAT, from Defence or the, the wider bureaucracy? Last question. Well, as the, the Prime Minister has made very clear, we've begun a, progress, a process. That's no, right. That wasn't the question. The, the, Andrew, um, what we've done is we've begun a process. Um, no decisions have been taken. Proper consultations will be had. But the fact is, Australia was being, Australia was being required to take a decision on a major vote at the United Nations. Um, this issue, has, as you know, has been considered uh, within closed doors of government for some time. Uh, and uh, no decisions have yet been taken, but a process is underway and proper consultations will be having. Just feel last question. Yeah. For, for the energy sector. A few on the mats, and even some of the Liberals are saying, why not? Go the full hold on antitrust and extend it across the business sector. Any, do you have a problem with that, or you want to keep it just focused on energy? Well, people have asked me about, for example, the banking sector yeah. and financial sector. And what I've said is we do have a process underway uh, through the Royal Commission um, to ensure that we strengthen um, the, uh, the regulations, the laws, uh, the compliance uh, in, in, in that sector. Um, and we will await uh, the Royal Commissioner's findings, but just this week I've introduced into Parliament a strengthening of the penalties that are applied to white-collar criminals. We're talking beyond banks, supermarkets, insurance, well, regulation, any, any sort of... I, I think the energy, the energy sector is uh, somewhat different to, to other sectors. Uh, I think the public's patience has run out with the energy companies. Uh, we are firmly on the consumer side. Uh, it seems that the Labor Party is hedging their bets, wanting to take the side of the big energy companies. That's a mistake. Under Labor, prices doubled in the electricity market. We have commissioned a report from the ACCC. They uh, received a lot of confidential documents. As a result of the recommendations we are now implementing, uh, electricity prices will come down and our economic plan is working. Thanks so very much. Are you ruling out indemnifying coal power plants?
Treasurer Josh Frydenberg there calling that news conference to again have a bit of a crack at Labor over its housing policy, but was forced to defend the government's position on potentially moving the Israel embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. It's not all that clear what the process is from here, but he says this is something that there are internal discussions on at the moment. Also having a bit of a crack at Labor for looking like, this is not a firm proposal yet, but looking like they will adopt the national energy guarantee. This was a policy devised by the government that it's now all but scrapped. Certainly the emissions side is gone. Labor looking potentially at taking this same framework to the election for its own emissions reduction target, that overall one of 45% in our economy by the year 2030, compared to the government's of 26%. We'll have more discussion with our political guests on the program. First, though, a judicial inquiry into the conviction of Australia's worst female serial killer has begun today. The inquiry was told a report that casts doubt on the forensic evidence used to convict her would be tendered. Let's go live to Sky News Sydney reporter Caroline Marcus, who was at today's hearing.